Okay guys, this is Alex coming at you from the parking lot. And um, I was actually thinking about something a while ago uh, to make a video on and today a customer reminded me about it. Um, a customer that has a shop which primarily works on cars like this and he's very familiar with these cars when it comes to carbureted, very simple distributor, um, you know, fuel pump, very, very quick and easy stuff. Um, when he ordered a tune from Lund Racing, he was actually interested in the process. He was like, hey, so what in the hell is going on with this? Because look, these are obviously, this is a 351, obviously, right? See, there's a lot of room. And this is a 302, technically, Coyote with a supercharger. Not a lot of room. So, you know, the moment someone that works on this all the time sees this, I would understand why they're intimidated right away. Like, trust me, I would be too. And only since I've kind of gotten a decent understanding of the tuning aspect of these cars have I gotten more comfortable working on them. So, when I first got into tuning, this is what I was mostly aware of. I would never really got into the A9L computer, Fox Body stuff. I went from this right to this. I didn't really have a transition period where I got familiar with ECU tuning, like um, two valve, three valve, Cobra, uh, you know, old GT500. I jumped right into Coyote tuning. Um, and obviously I am learning the way that Lund Racing likes to do it. You tune Coyotes probably a completely different way and that's not wrong. I just tuned for Lund and I learned their ways. So let's just talk about real quick how in my brain it made sense. So after looking at the tunes a lot and seeing MAF curve and injector data and all this stuff, it like clicked one day like one day i was just kind of sitting around and looking at the software and just utterly confused and i felt lost but it clicked one day i said hey let me ask you guys a question because on a carburetor you have almost everything that this has in terms of function but where you adjust it in the tune is what matters obviously there's not injector pulse with nothing like that but let's just talk about the fueling aspect okay so on a carburetor, and again, I am no expert, I'm a novice, I just happen to explain things halfway decently. You get about seven pounds of fuel pressure in this line from a Holly Blue pump. And in here are two, let's just call it small fuel tanks. There's a little float with a needle and it stops once it reaches its uh, a predetermined level. And then when you want fuel, you press the gas pedal, right? Easy. You press the gas pedal, butterflies open up, boop, and all of a sudden you hear vroom vroom. These cars are not like that at all. You can't go in there and rev anything. You, If you had the car running and you disconnected this, well, this math sensor not being connected will make it default to a completely different table. So you can't just simply, on a math operated car, unplug this and expect it to run properly period especially on a coyote if you have a, a ls yeah you might have a function to shut off the math but on a ford no freaking way so i started thinking to myself how can i make sense of everything all right so i asked john lund senior where are the squirters on the carb in the tune and he knew exactly what I was talking about. Now for you Coyote guys and EFI guys that don't know what the hell I'm talking about, I'm talking about this guy right here. So when the car's running, it's pulling fuel down based on vacuum. If you put your hand over this thing while it's running, it'll suck your hand right down. So that suction is drawing the fuel from here, from the jets, as, and it'll slowly kind of trickle in and you can adjust the idle air mixture, mixture screws here. But forget that, let's not get too into the weeds. This arm right here, if you tap it, you'll see fuel come out, okay? That is basically extra fuel for tipping when you have more air coming in once you open the throttle blades or the carburetor blades. The amount of fuel it's sucking in via vacuum sometimes is not enough and the squirters compensate for that, okay? So I asked, in, I asked one of the guys training me, where are the squirters in the, where are the, squirters in the carburetor on this tune? And he showed me the table where that happened. I said, ah, interesting. Then the math curve. The math curve is basically data for this sensor right here based on the velocity of airflow. Same as this. 
because the amount of airflow that comes in here, let's say if you're in high altitude or, or um, you're in at sea level, the jetting generally doesn't have to change generally because it's only sucking in what it can through here. And depending on how quick the air gets sucked into this, well, it'll the jet will allow uh, a certain amount of fuel to get in. If you need more fuel, you gotta take this off and replace the jets in the metering block. Let's say you got a 67 and a 72. Well, you put, if, if you have a lean condition, you raise the jet, so now it is allowing more fuel to get past that point in here. No different than if you got a bigger MAV housing. That's right, if you got a bigger MAV housing, at the bottom of the curve, you have to make the numbers bigger. At the top of the curve, wide open throttle, because the, the, the math data looks like this, points, 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 points. Then there's a transition period. In the transition period, then straight up is wide open throttle. Well, wide open throttle is dictated by the secondary jet. And then here, it's dictated by the top of the math curve. And right there, it clicked. I was a novice, I didn't understand what was happening, but I, I said to myself, okay, I get it. And the other thing that made sense in my head when it came to tuning this, that has nothing to do with cars, is imagine you have a candle, and the candle is burning the wick at a certain temperature. Well, the velocity of the air hitting the candle might affect the temperature of the flame. So my job is to keep the flame at a constant temperature or let's just say a glowing filament right let's say you have a glowing filament and it's uh 200 degrees and you have air passing through it well let's say the air passing through it starts to bring the temperature down in the glowing filament well in the tune i give it more fuel so that that filament stays at a certain temperature in my crazy stupid brain that's how it made sense now, when it comes to timing, this gentleman asked me, how do you guys mess with timing on this thing? And what are the thresholds for timing on an NA version of a Coyote? I said, well, let's say, and he said, I'm real familiar with NASCAR stuff. I said, okay, easy. If you have a small block Ford or a big inch of anything, a carbureted car with a small block Chevy, small block Ford or anything like that, if you have race gas, you might be able to see power all the way up to 33, 34, 35 degrees. And he says, well, how do you determine that? I said, well, in the tune, it's a simple throwing numbers at it. You determine how much timing you want to see in the tune on this one. You keep checking timing on the balancer, keep turning this guy right or left, depending on how much timing you want and how much little you want. And he's like, oh, so it's basically punching numbers. I said, yes, but the issue is where to punch the numbers? Where do you want to punch the numbers? So a lot of people that have only seen this, only seen this, they've never even dealt with anything carbureted, look at this as some stupid magic. And it's really not that difficult. Think of these as two tanks. Think of the jets inside here as your math curve. Or let's just say your VE table. Maybe it doesn't make sense to you, but in my stupid brain, it makes sense. To me, the primary jet is the bottom of the math curve. Okay, this is your idle air mixture screws. You can also call that like the bottom of the math curve. This metering block right here is the bottom of the math curve. And at wide open throttle, this one opens up because when you come over here, See this, see this arm? When you give it throttle, the front squirters do something. And then when you go wide open, this arm moves, watch. See? And when that arm moves, that squirter goes and does some stuff. So to me, this is the bottom of the math curve, idle. Then there's a transitional period where this squirter takes place and helps uh, fueling until the wide open throttle, AKA the top of the math curve takes over or the secondary primary jet aka metering block it's the whole situation so i wanted to put out a little quick video of people that look down on this because they're only familiar with that and then the opposite effect where people look down on that because they're only familiar with this in my opinion if you get your base knowledge out of an engine like this where you understand what timing does mechanically, you physically moving stuff, you physically moving idle air mixture screws, you physically replacing the squirter, the primary jet, secondary jet, and the secondary squirter, all that stuff, if you understand it, 
all you have to do is know where that is adjusted in the calibration for this. That's what you need to be taught, in my opinion, in my most humble of opinions. Now, people would say, well, you could do so much more with these cars. You can do a more aggressive, you could do a more aggressive pedal ramp. I go, oh, really? Okay. So, huh. in here, where are you? In here, there is a cam. There's a cam here. Let me turn the car on so I don't flood the engine constantly manipulating constantly manipulating the throttle now because i've revved it so i've thrown fuel down into the cylinders i bet you this car will start right up because i don't even have to pump it because i've thrown enough in there to have it start there you go not a problem let me, let me rev it up a little bit to get it going oh by the way driver demand there's my driver demand make sure okay turn it off because i want to get that fuel that i threw in there burned i don't want to keep flooding the sucker and i just have to replace the spark plugs and i don't want to have to replace them again okay so in here there's a cam this cam determines the ramp that right there determines the pedal ramp of your accelerator pump okay so it'll determine how quickly it opens and closes. What I'm looking at is, usually it's a, um, where is it, where is it? Let me see. I'm trying to find a better illustration. Let me rev it. Theoretically, it should be in here somewhere. There's a cam that should be replaceable. Oh, right here, right here. See, okay, under the accelerator pump. So in here, I'll go over here and I'll point at it with the software there we go actually this GoPro gets right up in your grill in here that plastic piece that little plastic piece behind here determines how hard you hit the squirters aka the accelerator pump or everything that's demanding fuel so when you give it throttle that cam the aggressiveness of the cam lobe that is pushing up this little this little lever will determine how wabba snappy let's say you want a long pedal well the lobe on the cam will be less aggressive let's say you want a really sharp pedal well the cam on that accelerator pump lobe will be more aggressive and uh, i believe if i'm not mistaken see right here perfect this this little plastic part right here determines the ramp so there is infinite adjustment when it comes to pedal feel um the touchiness of the throttle typically when you touch the accelerator pump just tap it a little bit you should see fuel come out of there with some very light taps just like that and that's usually what people tend to like on carburetors just a this one probably needs a little bit of an adjustment because see actually it's not that bad see might have been just a little locked up but once you understand this in my opinion okay long-winded but look in my opinion you will be way better off understanding this if you understand this mechanically understand what's happening in the engine understand what uh a combustion event is like the the, the compression the combustion um how the intake valve comes out how it opens up once you understand this mechanically I think it'll make your life a lot easier when it comes to understanding these. So a lot of people that do these are afraid of doing these because no one teaches them where to adjust. I'm not going to teach you. I am no teacher. What I'm telling you is how I learned. I said, hey, where are the squirters on the carburetor? The guy said, here. So he understood. I said, well, where's the pedal ramp? And he goes, here. I go, oh, it's all, in it. it's all where it's indexed in the software. So when a lot of you guys say, hey, Alex, why doesn't the 2021 Mustang have as much sauce as the 20 the 18 to 20 i'll say simple not everything that we like to tune with is indexed that we want to see now in order to have stuff like that indexed or you can index it yourself and find it in the tune or the binary it requires some special software we're not going to get into all that today but for a lot of the people that are, are familiar with this i'm trying to you know give you a little bit of information of how you can adjust so many things on this timing oh gosh the other thing is your timing ramp that's right you can adjust your timing ramp guys how do you do that 
I don't know if I can take this guy out. Oh no, it's got two, it's got two um, screws holding it down. But let's, what is the timing ramp? How quickly you want the timing ramped in? Well, this guy, if I'm not mistaken, has weights and they fling out and they fling out with centrifugal force. So the faster this spins out, the weights for a timing advance fling out depending on how heavy they are. A heavier weight, faster timing ramp. A lighter weight, a slower timing ramp. Um, I hope I don't have that backwards, but I'm pretty sure I have it on the money. And um, that can be determined mechanically. Why do you guys think I am super intrigued about making a complete analog situation where all I have to worry about is spark and fuel? Because I don't have to worry about a mass airflow sensor going bad. I don't have to worry about a throttle position sensor going bad. I don't have to worry about a cam sensor going bad. I'll never have coil codes. I'll literally never have coil codes. I'll never have to worry about an EVAP sensor giving me shit. I'll never have to worry about IMRCs giving me shit. I understand that you guys wanna latest and greatest and stuff like that, but when you wanna just go racing, in my opinion, the simple stuff, it's where it's at. I understand a lot of people do a all out race setup where it doesn't have radiator, doesn't have an intercooler, it's just meth, blower, meth, and done. That's what intrigues me, analog race only. Street stuff, that's why we got this, and that's why we got this. So hopefully this video is interesting to some of you when it comes to my thought process on tuning and how it made sense in my head. If not, let me just talk shit for a little bit and show you some of my cars. <laughs> Thanks for listening guys, talk to you later.